Good morning, church. I wish to welcome each and every one of you who are with us online. Though we can't see each other, your presence blesses us. It is a privilege and a joy to proclaim Christ is risen out here amidst the glory of God's creation where the birds are singing and the trees and flowers are blossoming. Though I wish we could be together, nonetheless, it is Easter, and when we do get back together, it will be our own particular Resurrection Sunday. But today is Easter, and Easter deserves our full worship, our attention, and our gratitude. So let's join together in this beautiful and traditional Easter hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. love always seems to catch us off guard. We come to the tomb looking for death, but find life instead. As we behold the glory of our salvation this morning, take us back to that moment of discovery when grief and loss gave way to a glimmer of hope. Before we shout our alleluias, remind us of the moment when despair was transported into glimpses of new possibilities. In the holy quiet of Easter morning, we take a, a moment of silent gratitude that Christ calls each of us by name. And so today we proclaim, Christ is risen, alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Hi, everybody. Bye -bye. Hi. Hi. It's so nice. 
it's so nice to see you all. I haven't seen you. Some of us haven't seen each other in a long time. So we're going to um, say hello to everybody. First, we have two very special guests. We have our friend Hannah all the way from the Netherlands. Hannah, it's so great to see you. It's good to see you all as well. All right. And then we have our administrator, Patty cohen Hecht. Patty, you want to wave at everybody? Patty is helping us with uh, those, some of us technology challenge people with the uh, technological aspects. So thank you. And we just want to say hi to Julia and to Carrie and to Benjamin and Emily and to Anna and to Julia. Can you guys wave at the congregation for us? Mm. All right. Hi, everyone. All right. So what I want to talk about today is uh, we're celebrating Easter, but I want to talk about uh, some of the changes that have been going on. Now, some really crazy and different things have been happening over the last several weeks. We've had, um, your parents are home all day. Is that typical? And then we've got, uh, what, about, what about the fact that you're going to school at home? Did that take a little bit of getting used to? Yeah, for sure. Or do you like it? Do you like it? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so there's been a lot of changes and um we can't go to church this is the way we're having church now we're having church online that's different so sometimes uh the changes and we all know why we're staying home we're staying home because there's a virus and we're told that if we stay home we're going to stay safe both for ourselves and other people so what i want to ask you all today is the changes that we've had for the past several weeks have been sometimes scary right anybody admit that's been a little scary been a little scary. So what I want to ask you all is what kinds of things do you find comforting or to help make you feel safe when things feel a little scary? So I'm going to go first and then I'm going to hi hi and then I'm going to ask some of the rest of you what you find helps you feel comforted when things are a little scary. So I have here what do I have here? Soft animal. Teddy bear. How many of you have teddy bears? Mm -hmm. Why do we like stuffed animals and teddy bears? How, why, how come they help us? What do you think? Uh, Julia, why are teddy bears, why are stuffed animals good? Older um, Julia. Oh, older, um, they comfort us and they, can, they help us keep us safe. They do. They're soft and cuddly. And do teddy bears or stuffed animals ever judge us? No. No, oh, they're nice, quiet companions. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Hannah what kinds of things she, she has or she thought of that helps us feel safe when there's all kinds of changes around us. Okay, um, for me, I have this photo of my family. It's a really old photo, as you can see. Um, but because I'm in Europe and my parents are in the States, I call them every day and I look at pictures so that even though I can't be with my loved ones, I can still feel close to them. That is a great answer. So when someone is away, she's got pictures of her family. Hannah, thank you for sharing that. That is wonderful. Pictures of your family. Okay, what else helps us feel comforted and safe when things get a little scary? Who, wanna, who wants to volunteer next? Okay, okay. Anna. Um, I know for me, I always, you know, I love drawing and I also love music. And so sometimes whenever any of us are starting to feel down around my house, we just start playing music and, you know, I can draw and let out all of my feelings in that and then feel like you know things are going to be okay as long as we have some sort of creativity going i love that things that make you feel creative and that you're using your talents for and your whole family gets involved right mm -hmm. so music and singing that that's a great answer all these are great answers and they're giving me things to think about too julia good one you raised your hand what about you Oh yeah, I also said family and friends because like they assure me that everything will be all right and like they are with me, not like Hannah because she's like off in school and everything, but like they assure me that everything will be all right and I can go to them when I'm feeling afraid. So I think what you're saying, Joy, is your your family's with you, which you yes. get thanks and that their their presence is a big for doing things with them. Okay, Carrie, did you want to add something? What makes you feel safe? Cats. What is it again? Cats? That might be your kitty cat? Oh yeah, my kitty cats do that for me too. What's your cat's names? Pretty. Pretty, all right, that's a great name. Yep, I think our our cats, my cats make me feel really happy and safe. And they're, they're stuck in the house with me and I'm stuck with them. So we're keeping each other good company. How about you, Julia? Julia Gartland, what makes you feel safe? What do you think? Uh-oh, we can't hear. Tell her to unmute herself. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Anne, can you unmute yourself? Just look at the mute. 
I don't know if it's the mute button. It could be that you're not connected with your computer audio. Check your computer volume level. Okay, well, well, she's checking. We're going to go to Benjamin and Emily. And uh, Benjamin, what makes you feel comforted and safe? Bluey. Bluey, his favorite stuffed animal dog in the whole wide world. Oh, Bluey, your stuffed animal dog. That is great. Do you have, where is he? He's going to get us? He's going to get right. Bluey. Okay. <laughs> Show them Bluey. Three, two, Let's one. see Bluey. Oh, look yeah. how cute he is. Benjamin has I... had Bluey since he was born. Oh, that's so sweet. Benjamin, I think that we would all love Bluey. He looks so cute and safe. Thank you, Benjamin. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yep. Okay, Emily. <laughs> I think Julia disappeared again to, to try to figure out the technological aspects. So when she comes back, we'll get back to her. Julia, are you there? All right. When she comes back, we'll go back. Did anybody, did anybody think of anything that no one mentioned that makes us feel safe and comforted? How about you, Patty Cohen Hecht? I told you, if I, you're going to be in, I'm going to ask you. What do you think? Well, first I had to unmute myself. <laughs> We're all learning <laughs> you feel safe is safe being able to scary. But, but Zoom my family every day. I speak to my children and my grandchild and my sister. And uh, this Zoom thing is a miracle. That's great. Well, that's a really wonderful way to put it. Does anybody else think of anything that no one said that makes you feel safe when times get scary? I mean, I've been enjoying uh, going outside in the backyard yes. and just, you know, yes. spring's coming despite everything. Absolutely. If we feel really scared and really unsure, we could try talking to God and pray for guidance. Absolutely. Prayer is a huge resource when we're feeling scary. And it's a, you know what? It can be as simple as saying, you know, Jesus, help me to feel calm. Or Jesus, I know you're with me. You're absolutely right. Thank you for that answer. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And I'm going to say, now that we've established all the things that makes us feel better, sometimes there are changes around us that we can't control. And what's going on in the world now with the virus and all of us staying home, we cannot control that. Sometimes there's just change that we can't control. But, you know, there is one thing that never changes. And I, wanna, I really want to say that. One thing that never changes is God's love and Easter. So here we are with Easter. And I'm really glad it's Easter because Easter reminds me that that is one thing that's never going to change. We're always going to have Easter, and Easter is always going to teach us about God's love. And I like to call Easter Resurrection Sunday. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if Hannah could put it in a sentence or two, what we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday. This is her own words, and I'm putting her on the spot. But she's the oldest among you all, and I know she's going to have a good answer. What do you think, Hannah? Um, on Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection, the raising of Jesus from the dead and the fulfillment of all the things that he said he was going to do and the Bible said that he would do. Yes. So as Hannah said, what we're celebrating on Resurrection Sunday is Jesus goes to be with God forever. And the big promise in that is that no matter what happens, God loves us always. So that means in the middle of this virus, God loves us always. It means in the middle of the crazy changes around us, one thing stays the same. You can turn to God always in your fears. How many of you feel okay to say a prayer? Raise your hand if you feel okay to say a prayer. Good, good. We have a group of prayers. Okay, you can always pray. But the gift of Easter is that God loves us no matter what. Now, do you, do you all think we do good things all the time? Do we do bad things once in a while? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We all do. We, 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 we call that sin. And again, Easter reminds us that no matter how far off the path we go, even when we do bad things, God's love is still there for us no matter what. So what I want you all to know in the midst of these changes, God's love is there for you. That's not going to change. And I want you all to know that our church family loves everybody, even though we can't see everybody. And I will so look forward to the day when we can be together again. But it's fun to be together this way, right? Mm -hmm. If since we can't see each other in person. So in a couple weeks, we're going to try this again. Would you all come on with me in a couple weeks to, to do it again? All right. All right. Good. It's so nice to see you. So what I'm going to ask us to do is say our prayer together. And then I'll ask us to say Happy Easter to the congregation. So I want to say again, thank you for coming on. I am so happy to see everyone's face. I've missed 
so much. So let's pray together. And you know how this works. You'll say the words after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Jesus. Thank, thank you for always loving us. Thank, thank you for thank always, you for always loving, loving us. Help keep us safe and healthy. Help, Help keep us safe and healthy. Safe and healthy. Until we see each other again. Until we see each other again. again. Amen. So folks, on the count of three, I'm going to say I want you to look out and wish your church friends who are going to be so happy to see you. You have no idea. On the count of three, I'm going to ask us all to say Happy Easter to our church family. So one, two, three, let's say it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Okay, Please. God bless you all. We'll see you soon, okay? God bless. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Thank Ben. You. Bye, Goodbye. Hannah. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Bye Julia. Bye. Julia. Bye, Anna. God bless. God bless. Thank Thank you. You. Maureen and Emily. Bye-bye. verses 1 through 24. God bless the reading of this word. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. 
The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteousness, righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The gospel for this morning's Easter Sunday worship is John 20, chapters 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sent out and went, set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she went, wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. There were no street lights, headlights, or even flashlights. There was just darkness and a woman walking alone through the city streets going toward the woods. Mary, the woman from Magdala, was probably whispering to herself, if only those disciples had somehow hidden him, if only he had not come into Jerusalem at such a time of turmoil, if only if only Peter's sword had been able to fight. Mary probably was, was trying in her mind to do what all of us sometimes do, to reverse the past, 
to go backward in the story, wishing somehow there could be a different outcome. You know, we all play the if only game at one time or another. We all have something in our life that we would like to reverse or to erase. If only I hadn't accepted that offer, if only I hadn't made that decision, if only I had known about the problem or done something about it earlier, if only I had let her know how I really feel. Do you have an if only? Our if onlys can cause us great harm. In the midst of her if onlys, Mary reaches her destination, which is the cemetery where she goes to anoint the body of Jesus for burial. Perhaps she was so preoccupied with her if onlys that she didn't even notice until she got there that the tomb was empty. Jesus was gone. She froze. Then she did the only thing that she thought to do, which is that she ran back to get the others, the other disciples, and two of them came back with her and they also saw that the tomb was empty. But for some strange reason, they left and she was left standing there weeping. She was flooded with grief and now she can't do the only thing she had the power to do, which was to anoint the body of her loved one for burial. Her eyes are then drawn to two angels who ask her, why are you weeping? And she replies very candidly, they have taken away my Lord. They've taken away my Lord. A poignant cry filled with grief. She then turned around and bumped into someone that she thought was the gardener at the cemetery. And he asked her the same question. Why are you weeping? But this time she takes it one step further. She says to him, if you've taken him away, please tell me where he is so that I can go and find him. This Mary has guts. This is a woman alone demanding the body of a man who had been executed for political reasons. Everyone else has fled, but not Mary. She was there in a courageous act of love, and though she might uh, have been arrested or even killed, she stood her ground. She stood her ground and her love is rewarded. It is Jesus to whom she is speaking, not the gardener, although she doesn't know that at first. Mary, he calls out to her, and even in her shock, she recognizes his voice. Rabboni, she cried out, my teacher. Mary in that moment, we might say, glimpsed resurrection because resurrection addressed her and called her by name. Folks, in that moment, Mary gets a new start. The if onlys fall away, grief gives way to hope. In that garden, the first Easter morning, Jesus hits the reset button on her life. And that is what Easter does. It gives us all a new start. We, too, can become a new creation in Christ. It's interesting that Mary Magdalene, who was known to be one of the most notorious sinners of her day, although the scripture does not confirm that, it's interesting that Mary is the first to whom Jesus gives the opportunity for a new start. His death and resurrection set things right, wiped the slate clean, wiped away all the sin and what went before off the books, completely off the books. Can you imagine that the ledger for all the bad and not nice and not kind and judgmental things that you and I have ever done, wiped clean? That is what Easter does. Mary, you see, is the stand-in for all of us because we, too, get a second chance. That is if we want one. We have to want one and we have to know we need one. Jesus wants to hit the reset button on our lives, too. We, too, can be a new creation, casting off the old and putting on the glory of the new. I probably told you the story, but when I was um, a young child growing up in Morgantown, West Virginia, in a working class family that didn't have much money, no matter what was going on, one thing that always happened is that we all got new clothes for Easter Sunday. Everybody got new clothes every Easter. And for the girls, it was typically a patent leather, patent leather white shoes, a pastel dress, and Easter bonnets. Getting new clothes for Easter 
made us understand that there was something special about Easter and how you presented yourself in church that really should reflect that. Do we do that to the same degree now? I don't think so, though I can't really see what you all are wearing to this online church service, so I can't be sure. But now that I look back on it, these new Easter clothes make sense. We are invited, if not literally, to spiritually put on new clothes for Easter because Easter gives us a powerful message of hope, and it is this. We are a new creation in Christ, and we are asked to act like that is the case. We're asked to do our best to put off the corruptions of the old and put on the glory of the new. Do we have to be perfect? Of course not. We're talking about potential, we're talking about opportunity, but we're meant to understand this. Easter can restore us to that place, to the place where we know the very image of God resides inside of us and we are redeemed. We are redeemed from the failures that haunt us. That's the good news and I hope you are saying, how do I get that? You have to let resurrection call you by name to change you. You have to let Jesus, we have to let Jesus hit the reset button on our lives as well. We have to say yes. You know, you and I get mired in all manner of things that prevent us and keep us from saying yes, but it is our choice. God doesn't walk away. We do, but God doesn't. Now, sometimes we're seriously tested because there is darkness all around. And the scriptural account that we heard in John 20 actually refers to things being dark. And John's gospel is full of metaphor. And perhaps, just perhaps, this is a reference not just to the time of day, but to the state of the world then, just as it might be now. We are in a dark moment in our world. Some people woke up this morning and didn't even know it was Easter, or they knew it was Easter, and they just didn't feel like celebrating Easter. We are aware of a darkness we didn't expect going on around us. A darkness called a virus, which is called death, which has caused death, illness, fear, grief, economic upheaval, social upheaval, psychological upheaval, and it is not over yet. Some of us may even fear that the new normal, whatever that may be, will not be normal at all. But the truth is, we really don't know. But I do know this. I'm glad it's Easter. I need Easter right now. I need to know that our God holds creation in, it, in, in his hands and weeps when creation suffers. I need to know that the darkness will never, ever overcome the light. I need to know that resurrection is calling me by name, calling all of us by name, and that that calling is larger than any season of darkness. I need to be reminded that Jesus will meet us in the midst of whatever garden of grief you and I suffer and call our name and let us know we are not alone. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb because of her grief. She could be standing in for each one of us, overwhelmed by whatever troubles us this day. But then look at what happened next in the story. The encounter between Jesus and Mary, one of the most intimate encounters between two people in all of literature resonates in the chambers of my heart and I hope yours too. Mary, why are you weeping? He says, and then he lets her know and all of us know that she has never been alone and she will not be. We are not alone now, whatever it is we face. Jesus has been with us all along and God has never left us alone from the moment we came into being. Easter is not a magic wand that blows all our troubles away. It is more like a promise that God is with us in the midst of our troubles and a promise is a place of holiness to us forever. So that whatever, whatever is going on now is only temporary. And what does Mary do with the gift of resurrection? She goes forward and joyously proclaims, I have seen the Lord. I hope that you will be able to embrace Easter this morning because Easter is embracing you. I hope that you too today will see a glimpse of the Lord. This morning, Jesus is inviting you or re-inviting you to claim the Easter promise where all things have been, been made new, the slate has been wiped clean, 
a fresh start is being offered, and most important of all, your God cherishes you as a precious jewel. That's a pretty good offer, don't you think? The gift of resurrection has your name on it. May it be received in your heart just the way God has offered it. Amen. Join me in singing the three verses of number 310, He Lives. praise your holy name for you have brought life out of death and hope out of despair you have raised jesus from the dead to be the first fruit of resurrection and the pledge of your victory of love over evil wise god you know our doubts our fears and all our failures which like mary we bring to the tomb on easter morning may fresh life burst among us like buds awakening to the spring May shells of distrust which keep us from loving as you would have us love be broken away so that new life can emerge. May new relationships spring up where fear has kept us from one another. Through your spirit, nurture the small growth of hope, courage, and faith within us that we may always seek to love and serve you. God of amazing good news who exalted Jesus as leader and savior, come among us today despite the barriers that we put up and the defenses that we create. Breathe on us that we too might receive the Holy Spirit. Lead us to a stronger faith, invoke in us a forgiving spirit, and open our eyes to your signs and wonders in our midst. Quicken our hearts that we may understand the importance of sharing your good news, the good news of, our, of your risen Son, our Savior, Christ the Lord. Just like the disciples were amazed to witness our Savior's miracles centuries ago, May we too be amazed at the signs of your glory. 
May we reflect your glory in kind words and good deeds that we do in your name. Loving and compassionate God, we gather, even as we gather to celebrate Easter, we gather this morning with the awareness that your creation is in pain due to a virus that has reached every corner of our globe. It has caused death, illness, pain, and fear. And so this morning we ask your comfort with families who have lost loved ones. We ask your comfort for those who are now ill. Let them know they are not alone. We pray boldly for recovery of those who are ill. We pray for relief and support of our healthcare systems and our healthcare personnel, doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and aides and all those who, who stand on the front line to care for those who are sick, many now proclaiming to be exhausted and feeling desperate. Be with them and we give thanks for their sacrifice. We also pray for those who have lost jobs and those whose work is now on hold as we all pause to stop, help stop the spread of this virus. We pray for your presence for each of us in our fearful moments. Worry and fear are not of your heart, for we know that your perfect love casts out fear. You are larger than any threat we face, even the threat of illness. And so may we trust in your love for this time and all times to come. For we know that you cover us with your love and your grace and your peace. All of these things we pray in the name of our risen Savior who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as those as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen to thank all of you for your faithful giving. We thank all of you who are maintaining your pledges 
which is helping us tremendously at this time. We thank those of you who have given online, and we thank those of you who returned the Easter envelopes to us this week. And what we would like to do before we close is offer a prayer of dedication for your gifts. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, truly we see that you show no partiality, offering us abundance of life and fullness of grace to all who turn to you in their need. With deepest gratitude for your many gifts, particularly the gift of your Son, O Lord, we offer you our tithes and offerings this day. In the name of the resurrected one, we pray. Amen. And now, friends, from darkness and despair, from doubt and betrayal, from suffering and death, we find today healing, hope, and life. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Go forward in God's peace. Amen.